Ever wondered what APIs were? Why they're important? Find out and learn what SpaceX and LEGO have in common. Application Programming Interface, or APIs, are an interface used by programs to interact with an application. Essentially, it's how your program can work with someone else's program. Take an example of a telephone. It's an application. It has dials that users use to make a call. For another machine to make a call, it does not need the dial. It can connect directly to the phone, like this old-fashioned modem. APIs allow machines to communicate and work together. It's a language between machines and not humans. That's why APIs are powerful. They make other resources accessible to your program. Say you want to use an electrical appliance in your house. API is like the socket. You don't need to generate the electricity yourself. Just plug in and your appliance will consume electricity. Developers don't have to write everything. They just need to know how to connect plugs and their programs will consume the APIs. APIs form an ecosystem like utilities. Power, water are already available. A developer only needs to connect the pipes together to use them. The internet really is a series of tubes. Why use another program when we can write our own? Consider this question. What does Lego and SpaceX have in common? Turns out that they both use a tool called LabVIEW. LabVIEW is an engineering tool developed in the 1980s. For SpaceX, LabVIEW does everything from controlling the launch pad to the spacecrafts. For LEGO, LabVIEW handles the programming and visualization of the Mindstorm robotics suite. From kindergarten education to rocket science, APIs make everything possible. For SpaceX to catch up to NASA within just a few short years, they need to leverage another system with decades worth of engineering experience instead of reinventing the wheel. The same goes for when a traditional toy company wants to stay relevant in the digital age. To have two tips for developers. First, use services. Don't rebuild things that have already been built by others. Tip number two, connect APIs together. Not just one, but many APIs, so you can share data and form pipelines. This talk's focus is on web APIs. Outside of China, the digital ecosystem is built on top of the big four. They're Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple. They do everything from e-commerce to AI. In China too, the BAT ecosystem dominates every facet of people's lives. They're Baidu, Alibaba, and Tenshin. This is a chart of digital services by industry. The APIs look like stars clustering around each industry. This represents billions of dollars of investment. Note also the difference between the two largest companies in the world digitally. There's Amazon, and then there's Walmart. It's easy to see who's dominating. These are the companies getting billions of API calls a day. Why do companies make so many APIs? The demand for programmers is rising. There are now over 20 million programmers globally, and the market has spun up just for them. It's called B2D, or Business to Developer. At the same time, APIs are becoming simpler, easier, and more standardized, which means less coding. Whether you're using or making APIs, APIs are the key to a digital strategy. Let's look at an example. Google Maps is a very popular API. Websites like Airbnb use Google Maps to show the location of their flats. Airbnb does not run Google Maps. Google runs Google Maps. So how does this work? As a developer of a website like Airbnb or Time Out, I need the GPS coordinates of venues to show on the map. But GPS coordinates are not something you can memorize, nor will someone enter in every single venue's coordinates in manually. Instead, the content manager will enter just the address, and the solution is to use an API, namely the Google Geocoding API. You enter in an address, 
and the API will return a location with a latitude and longitude. It uses a format called JSON, or JavaScript Object Notation. It has labels and values, and is meant for programs to use, but is also human-readable. So how does the process work? An API call is an HTTP request. This is just like the request you make when you type in an address in your web browser. In this case, we're calling the maps.googleapis.com endpoint, and we're passing the address in as a parameter. When do we make the call to the API? When the user is on the website, they can enter in an address. When they hit submit, both the address and the longitude and latitude are shown on the website. To make this work, when the user gives the timeout app the address, the timeout app will make a request to Google Geocoding API to get the latitude and the longitude. The timeout app will then store the longitude and the latitude in the database and return both the address and the coordinates to the user. The key is the timeout server running the timeout app did the API call. It was not the programmer, and it was not the user. This is because APIs are consumed by programs, not humans. What about an app in China? In China, we can use a geolocation service provided by Tencent, which is very similar to Google's. You can use the apis.map.qq.com endpoint and put the address in as a parameter. Then Tencent will return a JSON with a location and a latitude and longitude. The timeout app can then show this venue on a map with a separate call to a mapping API. Now that we understand the workflow of an API call, let's look at some code. On timeout, I want the app to send a text message to the user if the gig has been canceled. To do this, we use an API from Twilio. There are four easy steps. You first sign up to Twilio. Then you get the credentials to use the API. Step three, we write some code. Here we first require the Twilio library that Twilio will provide to the developer. Then we supply the credentials. In this case, we have an account ID and an authentication token, which is a key. With this information, we create a Twilio client that creates a message with a phone number to send and a body with a text message. When we run the code, the program has just sent a text. It's that easy. In China, we can use a service provided by Alibaba. It's one of many digital services that Aliyun offers. Baidu and Tenshin Cloud also have the same services. To use the service, the code is very similar to that of Twilio. The only major difference is that you have to supply a template that has to be pre-approved in order to block spam. What if you want to make some money by letting your app charge the user? In China, there's a service called Ping++. It handles Alipay, WeChat Pay, and most payment methods. Ping++ handles the transaction. An app can show Ping++ payment interface. The developer just needs to let the service know how much and what for by giving the order number and the amount. You can also integrate with your WeChat public account and send red envelopes if you give the recipient's WeChat ID as the open ID. We have gone over some user cases for APIs. Now we're going to demonstrate how to build a fully functional chatbot app using just APIs. What is a chatbot? A chatbot interacts with users through chats like Facebook Messenger or Slack, where most of the time is spent on the internet. A chatbot acts just like an app. It can answer questions and run commands. Here, is shown an e-commerce chatbot that recommends clothing for the user to buy. We will be building a chatbot that will recognize an image of a clothing and recommend similar items to buy from stores. 
the future looks really bright for APIs. There are almost 20,000 APIs and 9 million developers who are making them. APIs cover every major function on the web, from fraud prevention, to payment, to AI. If you want to build a function, chances are someone has already built it as an API. The number of APIs have exploded since 2010. Companies are figuring out that it's the best way to make money, with some making over 90% of their revenue through their APIs. With all the exciting developments in tech, SaaS, big data, microservices, and AI, API is at the nexus of all these developments, and it's only going to grow. This is great for entrepreneurs. It allows them to deliver unique functionalities with less code. They can push out initial products quickly and less expensively. Lastly, I'll leave you with some resources. ProgrammableWeb.com is the largest catalog of APIs. API Hound is a less curated version and relies more on crawled APIs. And then there's API for that, which is a smaller list, but updated frequently through Twitter, another great source for APIs. In China, the Baidu API store is the largest catalog. There are also services that have aggregated data for developers to access, like Shenjian and Jihe. Unlike APIs from big enterprises, these third-party APIs are friendlier and have more documentation. We hope you've enjoyed this talk. When you're ready to build your own lab, come and join us at Level Gone and learn how to code. Thank you very much.